Hello, I just want to spend a few minutes talking about projections from cell membrane. Now in reality, in most cells that we come across, there's fundamentally two types of cell projection. The smaller one called microvilli and the larger one called cilia. Now, although they look similar, you should never confuse the two. Microvilli are about increasing surface area and therefore increasing the ability for things to move across the cell membrane. Whereas cilia are large and they have internal structure and they are about movement. They help things move either along the surface or in their extreme version called a flagella. And please, some people call these the flagella a third type. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not phased by that. Some people say there's microvilli, cilia and flagella. But flagella really has a relationship with cilia because they are about movement as well. So let's have a look at some electron micrographic images and talk about the structure of them. Here we have microvilli. Now let's get orientated on this picture first. This is a transmission electron micrograph. So that means it's a very thin section of the boundary of a cell. And here we can see the cytoplasm Now remember, we've talked before about this, cytoplasm is not just water, it has many, many filaments within it. Actin filaments, microtubule filaments, all sorts of filaments that act to give a cell its shape and its structure and to hold organelles in place. And while we're looking at this cytoplasm, we'll just note this here because it's big and obvious, this is actually a cross section of a mitochondria sitting in the corner here. And remember mitochondria are about producing energy. But the interesting thing to note is the cell membrane on this uh, on this cell. And you notice it's got these projections on them, these little finger-like projections. Thousands and thousands of them. <laughs> Imagine if I had to draw around every single one, we'd be here all day. These uh, projections out from the surface of the cell are called microvilli and they increase the surface area. Look how much cell membrane you now have in this area. They increase the surface area of the cell. So where do you see microvilli? You see microvilli in places, for example, where you want absorption to happen. And the best example of this would be the small intestine where you're trying to absorb nutrients that have been eaten and digested and you want to absorb those across the small intestine to then move them to the liver to then be useful to the body. So the small intestine has lots of microvilli. And the key thing to notice with this image is that the microvilli themselves are just filled with cytoplasm. There's no special structure within the microvilli. And please get the relative size. Look at the size of this mitochondria. And if you listen to the mitochondria video, you'll know about one to five micrometers in size. So these microvilli are actually really quite small. Microvilli are tiny in terms of their projection off the surface. And in fact, in, with the naked eye, you actually can't see microvilli. And this is completely different to the cilia. And here's an image of some cilia. We'll just go past the first image. I'll come back to that one in a minute. So this is a picture of some cilia taken in a different way. This is a scanning electron micrograph looking at the surface of cells in your trachea. 
So it's like we are floating in the air looking at the walls of your respiratory tract. And these large hair light projections that you're seeing are the cilia within your respiratory tract. And these cilia, in the case of the respiratory tract, are responsible for bringing the mucus out from your lungs to the back of your throat to allow you to swallow that mucus. And by swallowing it, you are then able to kill any bacteria or foreign material in the acid of your stomach that you have breathed in. It's a very clever little process. So these are cilia. And these cilia actually move. They actually work together as a group and they actually push the mucus. Let's imagine your lungs are down this end, down the back here somewhere. They actually push the mucus up the respiratory tree. And in fact, all cilia have a movement process in them that move whatever's on that surface to another place. So that's what cilia look like from the outside. They are very large. Look at the size of these. You can see these. Here we have the scale bar down the bottom. That's five micrometers. So this is very large. And if we looked at the cross section, let's just take a couple of these here, cut across them and have a look with a different type of microscope. This is what you would see. So here is a cilia cut across at a much higher magnification. Here's its neighbour cut across and there's its other neighbour. There's one more there and one here. So this is a sequence cut horizontally through. The important thing to notice in this image is that inside the cilia are actually some structural proteins. This is called microtubule. And you can see them arranged in a beautifully neat pattern with a peripheral circle and a centre core. Notice they're all the same. Peripheral circle, centre core. Peripheral circle, centre core. And on you go. Look at this. Isn't that so neat? And each microtubule is actually split in two. You can see that there. Can you see how they're split in two? But we won't get to that detail. These microtubules running up the middle of the cilia. And please, while we're looking at this image, look at the beautiful way in which this image shows you the bilaminar nature of cell membrane. Remember, we said cell membrane is actually two lipid layers welded together. And you can see it so beautifully in this transmission electron micrograph. This is a really beautifully done piece of electron microscopy work. We all aspire to make TEMs this good. So what we're looking at is the microtubule within the cytoplasm of each cilia. And if you followed this downward back into the cell body itself, and we're just going to draw a little picture like that, if we draw ourselves an enormous cilia like this, we won't even draw the end of it because it would be huge, and we drew the uh, microtubule running down it, and I'm just going to draw one for now. Oh, no, we'll draw two, why not? We'll draw one on this side of it as well. And we'll continue that cell membrane to show the rest of the cell like that. So this is the cell, and let's imagine over here would be the nucleus, way over there. So these microtubules, as they enter the primary body of the cell here, there is a mechanism, a mechanical system of proteins that need ATP energy and though that mechanical process there can make these tube, this microtubule make the cilia move in particular directions. So it's a very complex biochemical process that allows these cilia to move in an organised fashion. So just to summarise, there are fundamentally two 
projections from cell membrane that we talk about, microvilli and cilia, and the very large close relation of cilia called flagella. Microvilli are small projections that increase surface area to allow greater movement across cell membrane, whereas cilia are to allow movement and they have internal structure of microtubule to allow this to happen.